Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time. What's playing, Dan? We're watching The Lincoln Lawyer with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, we are. And all kinds of cool people are in it, too. Excellent. Awesome. I really hope you enjoy this one. I think you're in for a good treat there. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. Good cast here. They're getting music, too. The bell's a million? Yeah, yeah. What did they book this guy for? The cops are saying he beat up the girl really bad. Oh. What's the name? Louis Roulet. R O U L E T, like the like the wheel. That's <laughs> not how you spell a wheel, but got it. <laughs> Roberto, you mind checking that list, seeing where my man uh, Harold Casey is on it? Is that even legal? I doubt it. But you know, they work in the legal system. They decide what's legal. Harold. Rule one: I get paid, or I don't work. Mm. Judge won't let you. I looked it up. Pay close attention. Michael Holler for the defense, Your Honor. If I may, I'd like to carry this over. Does the state object? No, Your Honor. Just going to keep him in there. <laughs> Want a faster trial? Pay. Your right to a fair and speedy trial. <laughs> that costs extra. Gloria Larson called from county lockup. She got popped again? The usual with a complication. Cocaine possession. Habitual. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Hey, boss. Just keep doing what you're doing. I guess you're not too worried about him. It is broad daylight. What are they going to do? My boy Harold called from the pen and said you're stalling his case. I don't get paid. I don't work. We want Harold back on the farm. He's our best farmer, if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. He had that ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they knew the deal. Oh, yeah. Louis Roulet? Yes. I'm Michael Holler. This whole thing is a setup. I made a mistake with that woman, and she was setting me up. Keep down. Don't say anything about the case. Somebody's not used to being behind bars. I want a lawyer, too. My name's Corliss, two S's. Right now, I need you to back away and give us a little space. I'm backing, boss. There we go. Shady people, man. Jeez. No kidding. So if I checked your, your record... You'd find parking tickets. Are you gonna get me out of here? Oh, this guy seems sketchy to me. Are you the prosecutor who used to have the relay case? Haller. Son of a bitch. <laughs> they only picked him up in her home with blood all over him. Can I at least see the arrest report? Get it from whomever takes over. Hey, come on. You gotta disclose information here. Yes, you do. How's Haley today? She's good. I'll pick up the usual time on Saturday. Oh, ex-wife. Cecil Dobbs. Mr. Haller. Listen, my advice is let Val fix you up with a bond. But we were thinking of putting up property. Mrs. Windsor's beach house. Mother's name's Windsor? Isn't Windsor part of the royal family? Yeah, in England, maybe. <laughs> How much they pay you for what you shot in there? Seven fifty. Yeah. How about we take it off your hands for eight? No? All right, let's make it a grand. Well, he did just get make ten grand. Right. Lewis insisted. He'd write about a case you handle. I'll need a hundred grand up front. I'm working on five fifty an hour. Another hundred if we go to trial. Some good money. Jeez. All he's got to do is pay his driver and his paralegal and a private investigator. There we go. Eight for me, two for you. Thank you, Sticks. Anytime. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's just another one of his informants. <laughs> he's got a whole crew out there, didn't he? Yeah. Hooked on possession of coat, plus the usual. I know it was dumb. This guy paid me with it, and I had it on me when I went to the next. Sure you did. I did a guy at the travel in on Santa Monica. He had a shitload of coke in there, I saw. Do you know him? His name's Hector. This is a cartel guy? Hector Arande Moya. The DA wants him for drug trafficking. And an exchange? You drop all charges. All she does is a pre-trial rehab. It's a fair deal. It's a hell of a deal. Or I can take it to the Fed. They'll cut this deal in a minute. All right, you fucking asshole. <laughs> what are you mad about? He gave you a big name trafficker. Everywhere he goes, he gets what he wants. Yeah. Mr. Dobbs. Mr. Haller. Good to see you. This is Frank Levin. Mr. Levin is my investigator. His fees are in addition to mine. In addition. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Take away his fees. Okay. Mr. Hollick. Mrs. Windsor, pleasure to meet you. This is Frank Levin, my investigator. His fees are in addition to mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure everybody heard that. Regina Campo, known as Reggie. She brushed by me on her way to the bathroom. I hope I see you tonight. And she basically just laid her address on me. Well, we know his type. Wait until he came out. All right, so he comes out, you go in. So my back was to her, and that was it. She hit me with something. Really? Next I know, two fags are sitting on me, holding me down. And that's when I saw she'd set me up. She knocks you out, and then she wakes up bruised up to hell? It could be a setup. According to the victim, she was at home alone when the suspect presented himself at the door as someone she knew. Fun letting him in. God dang. Holding a knife 
That's not my knife. Fought free and seized a nearby bottle of vodka. Considering that it's on top of your head, that's interesting. It's a feasible story, though. Yeah. Are you sure there's not anything that you're not telling me? Nothing. Mm. I feel like he knows this like girl. You're hiding something. Yeah. Reggie gets up. There's uh, your napkin. Uh, Look at his hand. Look at his watch. It's on his left hand. That's no good. This shot is into the mirror behind the bar. Oh, okay. Not only is your so-called victim a prostitute, but I have her soliciting my guy on video. Doesn't change the offer I'm prepared to make. Well, what do you have? We will drop down to assault with a deadly attempted sexual battery. Put that at seven years, and maybe he'll do four. I think the family's going to go for that. No, that was probably not the worst offer either. These files look identical to me, right? There's something we're missing and we're not seeing it. Here's a discovery file I got from my clerk at the door chain. Mm-hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Son of a bitch. It's not the same knife. No. Recognize that? It's a picture of your knife. The one the cops have. Why'd you lie about the knife? He's your lawyer, man. I said the knife in the picture wasn't mine. I said it twice. You're ignoring the issue. What you should have said was I had a knife, Mick. But this isn't it. You brought a weapon to a meeting with the prostitute. Yes. <laughs> I always carry it. Mm. My mother was showing a place. It was in Bel Air, so she thought it was okay to go alone. But he was there. Who was there? The man who raped her. Oh. Your mother will have to testify. No, no, no. I don't want that. Look, I don't give a damn what you want. It goes to credibility. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, it looks fishy if you have a knife for no reason. Yeah. And this one's covered in blood? Yeah, it's not a good look. He has a kid, too. Got her. Oh, At least we did one thing right, huh? We did a couple. Well, I hate the idea that that's not a thing there. It looks like they would have made a good couple. They still get along pretty well. Detective Carlin? Hey, you been to San Quentin lately? See our boy Martinez? He's away forever, right? Too bad. Because his victim, Donna Renteria, she's dead forever. How does someone like him <laughs> sleep at night? Are you just going to, like, harass him everywhere he goes? This is harassment. I had a client once, decapitated his ex-wife. The DA tried to pile on two unsolved murders. But you got your boy off. It's called the justice system, Carlin. I know, but that guy, that guy belongs behind bars. Yes, he does. Okay. I'm kind of with Carlin on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your, um, your buddy Minton. Oh, he sandbagged me, but good. Mm-hmm. With that guy Corliss, right? Look, I know a guy like Minton wasn't above putting a jailhouse snitch on the stand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Screw it, I'm not gonna defend Minton. He fights too dirty. You know there are lines I won't cross. Like what? Don't you? Well, sleeping with the defense isn't one of them, apparently. No. You're right, they do get along. A little too well for a divorced couple. I don't see them complaining. <laughs> hmm. She's gonna wake up and she's gonna see us here. She's already seen you two yeah. here. Heard that name before somewhere. Yeah, isn't it the one that got murdered by Martinez? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Ooh, good lord. The same she face. She the same exact face. That's interesting. Nobody saw any other guy. There was another guy. There, it was a it was a, a white guy. He was right by the bar. Tall, left-handed. Three people saw you throw a knife into the L.A. River. Huh? Always a knife involved here. There's a deal to be made here. I can get you life. Life means you're paroled in 15. That's 15 years for an innocent man. Yeah. I don't want to go to jail for something I didn't do, man. I ain't going to jail for something I didn't do, bro. I don't get this guy. How does he get a guy who actually decapitated somebody's head out of out of murder, but this guy, he's just going to let him take the fall? Technicalities. That's stupid. That's all he works on. Yeah. He's been so smooth at this point, and we're finally realizing he screwed up. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. He didn't look too happy to see him, and I don't blame him. I wouldn't be either. I need to ask you some questions, Asus. Oh, you didn't ask me a lot of questions back then. I'm trying to make this right. You got to do a hell of a lot more than just make it right. You got to take care of this guy if you get him off. 100%. I liked her. You know, right off the bat, I liked her. You know, she caught my eye. It's all lined up there. How are you supposed to make decisions like that? <laughs> So how much for me to come over? Well, usually I charge a thousand, but for you, three hundred because you're sexy. Whatever. <laughs> sure. You said there was another guy, right? She was talking to him. Gee, I wonder who. Tell me if you recognize him. 
No. He's trying, I'll give him that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I met this guy. Was this guy in the club that night? God! That's the guy. You played me, bro. Why you bother me with this bullshit? Hey, is that the guy? Answer the question. Answer the question, you idiot. I don't trust you, dog. I'm trying to make it right. I never will. Interview's over. Just say yes or no. I don't know what's going through his mind right now, man. That seems like a pretty stout thing to build upon. Yeah. See, Jesus Martinez. He didn't kill her, Frank. That's right. She lets him in. Maybe he, uh, he fakes like he's Martinez and he forgot something. Maybe he had an appointment. Always the same move with this guy, isn't it? He punches her a few times, soften her up. Takes her and bends her over the table. And when he's done, he stabs her. It's quick and violent. They have yeah. no time to react. I couldn't believe that I actually was representing an innocent man. Just like my father warned me about. Mm hmm. Roulet is using Martinez as the other guy in the bar. He's not just getting off on killing women. It's seeing somebody else do the time. That's his M.O. Mm. That's pretty sadistic. That's bad, yeah. In what you got to do is find a way to put Roulet in Renteria's apartment the night she was murdered. That's what you Find a way to make it right, Frank. I was about to say, if you can prove that he was there, then it's like, wow, we've got cause for suspicion here. Yeah. Maggie, hey. Uh, I've been up to San Quentin to see an old client. How's Haley? She's uh -oh. good. You know she has soccer this weekend. His door's open. Mm-hmm. If you're wondering how I got in, I'm in real estate, so if... Oh, this ain't good. Uh -uh. You went to see Jesus Martinez, and I know what you talked about. Donna Renteria, I killed her. <laughs> wow. Attorney-client privilege. Attorney-client privilege. Mm-hmm. It's time for you to go, Lewis. With the position this lawyer is in. He's screwed. There's no, no easy way out of this. No. I took a cute picture of your daughter, Haley. Don't even oh. mention that. Yeah. And are you scared, Lewis? That's where you are right now. You're in a very dangerous place. Yeah, why doesn't he just whip your ass with this baseball bat right now? He's got cause. You broke in. Yeah. You are going to hear from the victim herself about her lifestyle. One that we would not condone. But remember... Anyone can be the victim of a violent crime. Yes. My name is Michael Holler, and I'm representing Louis Roulet. And I'm here to tell you he did it. <laughs> <laughs> this case is about her actions, how she saw a young man with signs of wealth as a ticket out of the life she was in. I'm really hoping Mr. Lawyer Man here is smarter than we think he is. I mean, he's slick, but he's got to be smart, too. He's in a pinch, though. He's got to yeah. figure something out. What are you doing here? I'm going to take Haley home. You've got some place to be. What are you talking about, Lord? What happened? This don't look good. Slow down a oh, second. Slow what down. Happened? What happened? Somebody shot him in the chest and the head, and then they shot the dog, too. What? It's Frank's house? Oh, no. I shot his investigator? Uh, I don't need to tell you to stick around town where I can find you, do I? My suspect. Yeah. His wolf's falling apart right now. Yeah, that seems a little too tied into what's uh, what's going on here. Frank Levin was murdered. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Roulet did it. I thought you and Frank would defend him. Why would he take Frank out? That makes no sense. I figured you know exactly how it went down. You don't think he did this? Come on. Might be in on it. What do you think? You think I cut the kid loose so you could murder Frank? Crazy. 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 Frank killed Frank. Oh, make, I'm sorry about Frank, but I didn't do it, man. You're the only one that could have taken it off him. Oh, the, the ankle tracker. Yeah, because they would have known where he was at. Yeah. It could be somebody else. You, you don't exactly have a lot of friends out here. Or he could know how to do it himself. He's wealthy. He's probably got the connections. Yeah. Well. I don't think you need to be getting drunk with Roulet running around out here. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Maggie, did I get Frank Levin killed? Mickey, no. Mm -mm. Poor guy. Mick, it's me. I tried you on yourself. You asked me to do some digging on Roulet. Well, I might have found Martinez's ticket. Make his ticket out of Quentin. Someone's at the door. Look, you go and you have a good time. Oh, why don't you leave on the message? It turns out Frank called me just before he was killed. He said he found something. Something that could help an old client of ours get out of prison. What'd you find? We found a bullet casing in the room from the 22. It wasn't a woodsman. A what? A Colt woodsman. It was an old antique job. That's the gun that killed him. Sounds like a wealthy person's gun. He's upset. Sounds like it's his gun. Oh. He was in your house, that's right. Yeah. He's setting you up. Mm. Damn. <sighs> the nerve of killing somebody with some with their friend's gun. Morning, Mick. 
piece of shit. It's See, too bad about Frank Levin. How you stand next to this guy in court? Why the hell should he help you out of this? Let you take the fall, man. We went on a date to the association, about 400 bucks worth. And she earned every single cent. Oh, shut up. Nobody cares, come on. She did not look like this. Man, what kind of sick bastard is something like that? You are shady. <laughs> no, we made pleasurable and consensual love. Then I paid her. Yeah, that's not making love, pal. <laughs> this is the easiest guy, I swear. Admit it, this whole thing is a setup. I never hit her. Or any other woman, you understand? Do you know a prostitute named Shaquille Barton? <laughs> this guy knows lots of prostitutes, doesn't he? I believe it. I'm not into that rough stuff. I'm a missionary man with a strong left. Am I on trial here? Not yet. But give it time, man. I think he's earned his way to that courtroom, yeah? It would have been smart if you had told me that you had a woodsman. Mm -hmm. There's one registered to you. Now you're the one that needs to start talking. Why didn't you report this stolen? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have. Still and all, we're going to have a look around the place. Start with the couch. <laughs> Just because you're sitting <laughs> on it. Turns out it once belonged to Mickey Cohen, the gangster from the 40s. Turns out that the county still has the evidence in storage. You can match the casings from a slug that's 50 years old? Yeah. How long will ballistics take? Oh, what are you thinking? Wondering what his time limit is before he goes to jail. Dwayne Jeffrey Corliss. Sometimes he goes by DJ. He's played the courtroom snitch a lot. Which one is he again? Do you remember? The other guy he met in the prison cell with Lewis. Oh, is he the one asking for a lawyer? Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, hey, sweetie. I need you to do something for me. You're Corliss, right? Oh, Talk to the DA. He gave me a way to get us both out. He wants a jailhouse snitch, doesn't he? Mm hmm. The prosecution calls Regina Campo. Why did you lie? Because I was scared. I didn't think the police would believe me, and I wanted to make sure they arrested him. Do you regret your decision now? Yes. Of course she does. And what made you approach him? I thought he was a known quantity, and I needed the money, so... So you thought he could solve your problems with money? No! I mean, yes. He attacked me, I swear! So what, you have to tear people apart here before you can get whatever you're, it is you're up to? He's got to keep the case going until he figures out a way out of this. Yeah. Yes, I recognize this knife it's the one that my son has carried with him for protection for the last four years there you are again okay mm -hmm. realtors alone in the house are sometimes robbed or even raped or murdered but has lewis ever been the subject of such a crime no but he knew someone who was she gonna say it was her i think it was her though is she gonna say that the incident took place on june the 9th 2007. how do you remember the exact date i'll never forget the day i was attacked and Lewis won't forget it either. He found me in the house tied up. It was traumatic for him. What are you doing to this poor woman? I don't know, but, but it does make him look pretty bad. The Earl, there's something I need you to get for me. Oh, you're getting other people involved now. Okay. Use your resources, I guess. Yeah. You didn't strike Miss Campo with your left fist. No. To kill no, her. I am not that guy. Do you have any idea what it's like to be accused of something like this? Look at me. Do I look like I did this? <laughs> I am innocent. I'm innocent, and I, I want this behind me. I don't see the tears. Crocodile tears. Yeah. Do you think Regina Campo would have done this to herself? Nobody deserves that to happen. Crimes of violence only come down to a woman getting what she deserves? I mean, no woman deserves that. You'll say whatever you have to, I guess. As most guilty guys would. Yep, exactly. Besides, he's got to find a way to pin this on somebody else. Yeah, this is kink, apparently. Yeah. What is this bullshit? I have nothing to do with this case. Subpoena to appear as a witness. It's a legal document, detective. Yeah, follow the law, be quiet. The state intends to call Dwayne Jeffrey Curlis as a rebuttal witness, Your Honor. Judge, who is this witness? And why wasn't I told about him until now? <laughs> this is an outrage! <laughs> Well, I'd have to read about this 30 minutes ago. Dwayne Corliss is a cooperating witness who spoke with Mr. Roulet in custody following his arrest. That's a lie. I didn't speak to anyone. I Quiet, anything. Mr. Roulet. <laughs> Do you want to go back and talk to him? No. You know, thank you, though. Mr. Minton's putting a jailhouse snitch on the stand. Everything he says will be a lie. I feel like you agreed to that too soon. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm here. Come to the courthouse at exactly 10.15 with the printouts. What printouts? Are you incarcerated at this time? No, no, I'm just in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that's true. Do you know the defendant? Yeah. I met him in lockup. Did you talk at that time? Yeah. Talked about how bad we need cigarettes. Okay. He doesn't look like a smoker to me. 
Did he say what he was in for? He said, for giving a bitch exactly what she deserved. He told you that? How many times have you snitched on a fellow inmate? This makes my fourth. This makes your fourth time. How are you alive? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. So he just said to you what you just told us. It's like he was bragging. Told me he did it before. So the other time he killed the bitch. Got away with it then. He'd get away with it now. There we go. So Donner, the other Donner and Taria. Yep. She was a dancer at some club. And she had a sexy snake tattoo wrapped around her body. Mm. Did he there it is. Else? There it is. Just enough detail. Get him. A moment with my staff, Your Honor. Be quick. What'd she get you? I'm... Well, my assistant, she was reading on the uh, on the internet about a DJ Corliss arrested in 1989 on drug charges, hometown of Mesa, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Okay. You remember but, Fred Bentley, right? You testified that he confessed to you the crime that he was charged with, being a 10-year-old girl, but he denied it in court. Mm, 1989, I was high a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> If you could read this for us. Frederick Bentley, wrongly convicted of... The case was bolstered at trial by testimony from an informant, DJ Corliss. Yeah, liar. Were you charged with perjury in this incident, DJ? No, I was not. You promised the same thing here, Mr. Corliss. You lied then, All right, lied Mr. Hallard. now. All right, I mean, Mr. Hallard, that will yeah. do. Objection, that Your will Honor. Do. Good job. So things are getting crazy here. Yeah. You put a documented liar on the stand. A man with a record of putting innocent people in prison. Your Honor. Shut the hell up when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Get him. You ought to be disbarred. I can think of nothing more prejudicial or corrupt than what I just saw out there. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Yeah, he's got a mistrial, this thing, probably. I want to know how Corliss got that shit he's saying. Maybe Frank Levin told him. Maybe he found something and gave it to Corliss, and that's why he killed him. Mm. Yeah, we still have to talk about you killing Frank. Mm-hmm. You're on the hook for the... Two murders. The state wishes to dismiss all charges. This is a motion to dismiss with prejudice. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Roulet, you're free to go. Court's adjourned. Damn it. But we still need justice. Thank you so much for my son. You're welcome. You were splendid. Eat shit. <laughs> I insist you join us for dinner tonight for a celebration. I don't think so. Lose Roulet. <laughs> you're under arrest. <laughs> Immediately. Good timing. And behind your back. What's the charge? He's under arrest for the murder of Donna Renteria. Can I have a word with him? Gotcha, motherfucker. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's how it's gonna go. I got you off. Time to find yourself a new lawyer. I've still got your gun. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna have to explain how you got it. Oh. <laughs> oh, good, good job. Because they will find it. If yeah. You First you get your client off for assault. Only to burn him for murder. I don't get you, Haller. Whose side are you on, anyway? He's on his side. Yeah. Specifically his side. Yeah. You know that, uh, Fabi, you asked me? God, no, he picked it up on the street. Real clean. What? What are you gonna do with that? I don't know. Just have it, man. Apparently, you can't show houses safely. You can't lawyer up safely. You can't do anything. That's interesting, right? Yeah. Mick, it's me. I tried you on your cell. You asked me to dig on Roulette. Said you didn't buy it, that all he had was parking tickets. Well. Oh. Got a parking ticket outside of Donna Renteria's house. Probably. They let Roulette go. Mm-hmm. Go to your sister's, stay with Haley, and wait for my call. The guy got out. He got bailed out. That's why he needed the gun. He knows Lewis is coming for him. Yeah. I need you to do me a favor. Is Roulette still wearing the tracer? Yeah, 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 he is. I need you to track him for me. Oh, man. I can't, I can't. I got a little bitty coming in in a few minutes. Val, Val, stop whatever you're doing. I need it, man. Yeah, man, he's threatened the family already. The nerve of getting out of jail just to go do that. He's headed up north on San Fernando. Mick, Mick, I think he's headed for your house. You want me to call the cops for you? He's not going to my house, Val. Yeah, I know whose house he's going to. Well, just the fact that he's here, you ought to have a surveillance camera watching this guy that he's outside after getting released. Right. Hello, Lewis. Our family's here. I know. You bring your knife? Because I brought this. Mmm. You got one chance to turn around and leave. And then what? You gonna keep coming back every night? Every day? No, then you go in the jail. Or you're just gonna shoot your ass. 
I'm not quitting until Martinez is free and you're convicted of murder. Well, why don't you just shoot me right now? I don't think I'll have to. Hey! Oh, <laughs> shit! Oh! The bikers! Oh, get him! Victim of gang violence. Oh, my God. Hospital, not the morgue. Woo! Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> it's about time he got some justice. It's been a long time coming. That's for the girls and what you were just about to do to those two girls. Damn. <laughs> okay, you had the right shady clients here. You were right, Mick. Rule got a ticket outside of Renteria's apartment on the night that she was murdered. It's all going to be on the DA's desk in the morning. He's toast. Absolutely. Oh. You knew, Mr. Howard. You set him up. The only person who was set up here was me. Yep. You have no idea who we are. I'm gonna burn his ass for killing my friend Frank Levin. He didn't kill him. Yes, he did. She killed him. Mr. Linder, get the hell out of my house. Oh. My son didn't kill Frank Levin. I did. That was for Frank. Ah! <laughs> what is this family? Bunch of criminals, apparently. I mean, she brought your gun back. There's a plus. <laughs> the silver lining? Yeah. <laughs> What if they were, like, accidentally put in the same room? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Roulet. Not quite a happy ending, but uh, he's alive. I thought I told you to be careful now. <laughs> Nobody till somebody shoots you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard down at the courthouse, uh, Martinez is out. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Martinez is free. There we go. Now we have some justice. Boss, we got company. Yeah, I see that. You know what? Uh, these guys aren't so bad. I mean, they push dope, but, uh, but you know, <laughs> they helped you out in a pretty good, in an interesting moment there. Mm. Really shoot your clients, mother? Damn right I did. She <laughs> shot me first. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Harold, he got caught with 50 kilos in his girlfriend's <laughs> minivan. <laughs> girlfriend's some cop's wife. That doesn't help. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> if things went down, I think we earned a little discount. I think so. Yeah, just a little. Tell you what, Eddie. How about I do this one for free? There you go. My kind of price. Are you sure you're feeling all right? <laughs> Repeat customers, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> I say he's probably defended half these guys. They might even take your uh, your kids to school for you. This is an escort for you. Yeah. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> you had justice served in some very different ways. Some ethical dilemmas here to discuss. Please bring it on. <laughs> now, I won't lie to you, sir. I don't think that I really saw him being like shady like that. And then it's like you find out that he's he knows backdoors in the legal system. Mm -hmm. But if there's not a backdoor that's going to work for him in any situation, then he just kind of gives up on it. It's like you don't even try to lawyer up. Yeah, I kind of felt bad for Martinez there because even with the, the evidence that was there, you never really had anything proving that he killed Donna. Yeah, he really should have tried harder to find something there. Even if he just looked at the parking tickets just to know, and he didn't find Lewis, maybe he could have found somebody else who said, hey, these people were in the neighborhood too. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence you could have used there to take the guy. Right. Now here's a question. Rulé wanted this guy to, to lawyer up for him, right? Mm hmm Because he had seen another case he worked on. I'm going to assume it was the Donna Renteria case. Probably. Why would you want him then? Because of the, the dilemma that it was going to put him in. If you sit there and say, hey, I've already put this guy away for this crime, you can't say, well, this guy did that crime too. I think that was his concern is, you know, if you start looking into the evidence, you're going to realize, well, wait, this guy's guilty of the crime I already put somebody in jail for. It's You had to have known that he was going to find out at some point. And that's the thing. He knew that any attorney that actually dug into his case was going to find out about this and find out that maybe he has done this to other girls. And then they realize, well, wait, that means somebody is in jail for a crime you committed. By picking him specifically, he knows it's a conflict of interest for him because he can't turn against one client for, to the benefit of another. Well, in that case, they wrote a pretty incredible story here, I thought. Yeah. In, ha in, in how they actually put it all together to get justice for Donna Renteria and get uh, and get Martinez out of, out of jail there. So. Yeah, because that's not what I expected when I went into this. I thought he was going to find someone who actually, you know was guilty of a terrible crime and then he was going to have to live with the eth eth ethics of trying to defend somebody like that sure because he's been hanging out with all these shady guys i thought maybe well he's going to find somebody who totally didn't do the crime at all 
and he's gonna have to defend them and you know it's gonna be a big inspiring ending and that wasn't the case at all his client was guilty of sin oh yeah and for me it's like to hell with the ethics here i have an ex-wife and a daughter out here and I'm not, there's no way in hell I'm going to allow you to go back on the streets. I'm going to find a way to get you locked up here. Yeah. One way or another. And he did. I bet you more than anything, that was a driving force for him. More than anything. Getting the guy off the that, street? Yes. The position I'm in that not only do I have a, a daughter and an ex-wife here, that takes anything, anybody I deal with mm -hmm. out of the picture. It's like the, the bikers deal in what they deal with. You are an animal, you know? Yeah. He's an actual threat to society. Yes. Well, I mean, so are the bikers, too. And that's kind of my big issue with his character, is they're trying to play him off as he's the good guy here. But everything he does is really kind of bad, if you think about it. He's sitting here dealing with bikers that he knows deals drugs. You know, those drugs are undoubtedly out there killing people. He's bribing people to get, you know, benefits to his cases. You know, he's not doing the full research like he's supposed to, like we saw with Martinez. And the fact that, you know, he knows his client is guilty, but he doesn't just come out and say that, you know, that kind of bothers me, too. No, I get you. You know, yes, you're protected by attorney-client privilege, but at the same time, you need to be working with police and trying to lead them to the evidence that they can figure it out on their own and not, not wait till this giant courtroom to do something because he really could have killed people the whole time he was gone. I'm going to give him a little bit of a leeway here, and I'm going to try to make my case on why. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, you remember when Roulet shows up at his house the first time? He found out exactly what he'd been doing all day and that he'd been, went and saw Martinez. Which tells me that he knows exactly where he's going all the time. If he's constantly out there trying to tip the cops off, he's going to know about it. He's going to do something. So it's like, you got to play your hand kind of cool here a little bit, I think. I think based on his circumstances in this case, yeah, you're right. He should have. But I think you kind of got to play your cards a little differently with guys like this. Because the, you saw his family. They have resources. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of ways to get out of jail. I mean, he... He went to jail for murder and he got bailed out. What's to keep it from happening? They're not gonna actually put this guy away until you have serious evidence. So he had to play his hand cool, I think. But then they took his investigator away from him, so. And that's true, but you know, at the same time, he had opportunities to get this guy out of his way. You know, the fact that he, that he broke into his house, that in and of itself was a crime unrelated to the case. He could have very easily turned him in for that. You know, if nothing else, it gets him off the street. It makes the police look at him hard and say, okay, Maybe there's something fishy going on with this guy. We shouldn't let him be out on bail. Yeah. You know, you should have told the police that he took your gun, which obviously looks bad on you because they know it's going to be your gun. That, and there's the part I don't get. It's like, my gun is missing. But then again, like, what is it? What's this going to do with him if he knows that the guy broke into his house, doesn't report it then, but later on his gun is missing, and then he says, well, this guy broke into my house two days ago. It's like, why didn't you report it then? That was his first mistake. And I feel like it's like that kind of... That kind of painted him into a corner where he had limited options. Yeah. So I think he played his, I think in the end, he played his cards the best he could and it worked out for the best. So I still think there's a little bit of plot hole there. I, I still think, you know, when the police tell you, hey, he was shot with a woodsman gun, I'm like, oh, I had a woodsman. You should have put two and two together right then and there and told the police, hey, this guy stole my gun and did it. Well, Dan, then we wouldn't have a, web, a movie here if he did all this <laughs> shit. No, don't get me wrong. It's a very smart film. I, I like how he had to. Really maneuver what? around everything to get to the conclusion here. Plot holes are always going to exist. Yes. They, they have to exist for for them to tell a story here. I, I mean, yeah. But it, it kind of bothers me. I think it goes to, you know, kind of back to what we were talking about with law-abiding citizen. You have a serious issue with the legal system that you need to figure out. The, tra <laughs> the fact that client attorney privilege kept him from putting a known murderer in jail is a problem. The fact that, you know, he can bribe people to get extra benefits on his cases is a problem. The, the, the fact that you have people like Mr. Corliss, who you know are jailhouse snitches and can lie about whatever they want to, to help the prosecution, is a problem. You know, this film shows a lot of the problems that are wrong with the American legal system. No, that's a great thing to point out. You know, and you know we're we're kind of fortunate in the fact that yes, they did eventually get Mr. Roulette, but what they had to go through to do it. No, yeah, that's fair. Good on the judge for pointing out that like, he couldn't think of anything more corrupt. Yeah. Than actually using a snitch to try to make your case. So, and the judge was 100% right. You know, you, you bring a guy in here who's a known liar, expecting him, expecting him to provide, you know, valuable evidence to this case, and, and nothing he says is reliable. Yeah, begs the question: how how often do you think that happens? Right? Probably all the time. He said that was his fourth time doing it. Yeah. This is one man. This happens everywhere. Yeah. How many people are actually innocent, and a jailhouse snitch is coming in there because he got some kind of deal to get him out earlier? to put somebody away for life that didn't do anything. Yeah. 
Like, like I love his, I love his family saying that about about you know not putting away guilty or innocent guys, because you don't want innocent people in jail. But at the same time, you can't use that as an excuse to let people, let guilty people get off too. Yeah, and you were a whiz in the courtroom. I don't know why you don't do it more. Yeah, the guy's really smart. I'll give him that. He's really smart. He knows all the all the loopholes in the laws and how to get everybody off on technicalities. He's a good man. You know, he should try to go more legit. Like the, like the family attorney there, to where he doesn't have to run around doing these jobs all the time. He can just sit on a payroll. Exactly. Man, money ain't everything. Sometimes you you clearly love what you do, you know? But sometimes you got to be doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Because so, for me, it seems like you're more interested in just um, enriching yourself. Which is why you keep taking on some of the clientele you take. He's making good money. He's charging them 100000 just to take on the case and then 100000 more to actually go to trial with it. And then he says, hey, this is my special investigator. His fees are additional to mine. Yeah, yeah. Like he's so, taking these guys for everything they got. Why not? They clearly had plenty to give. Yeah. I enjoyed the movie. This was fun to watch. It good. was actually a pretty good movie. I, I enjoyed the mystery of it all. And they didn't give the mystery away until the end. Yeah. It's like, ah, here's the killer. It's like, yeah, I mean, well, he was, but here's the person Here's the person that actually took out your investigator. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I like McConaughey's character, too. He was, he was kind of fun, but he was serious when he had to be. I thought so, yeah. Yeah, really good, witty movie there. A really well-smart written story. I just wish we had more of those. Yeah, yeah. So, But fam, I think we're going to go ahead and call it quits on that note. If this is your first time with us, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. Also, consider joining up and becoming a member to help support the channel even further, guys. It's not required, and I, cert I certainly wouldn't recommend it, neither would Dan. But we would love to have you nonetheless, guys. Don't do it. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.